Hi, I'm Magnus. I made this storage solution for clothing. If you want to know how I made it, just keep watching. For projects like this, I usually start with tinkering in SketchUp to figure out how everything can come together. This also provides me with a cut list of parts that I need. In this case I had a confined space and then it makes sense to start with making a basic shape of the volume where I remove all the surfaces to be able to work with the interior. From the beginning I knew that the interior will consist of two mirrored units with three parts each. The first one with two clothing rails, then some shelves and furthest back a rack of wire bins. I already had the wire bins and the clothing rails, so that determined the width of the shelves in the middle. Here I make a referenced copy just to fix the dimensions of the original piece, and when it's done I just delete the copy. To make the cut list I started by drawing up the sheets of plywood I was going to use, and started laying out the pieces. In this way it's easy to get an efficient use of the material, and it's easy to see how much material that was needed. Then it was finally time to make some sawdust. For this project I'm using 18mm Baltic birch for all pieces and I started to rip the long pieces with my track saw. Unfortunately my sliding table saw can't handle pieces longer than 1900mm, so track saw it is. When the longer pieces were ripped I could then turn to my sliding table saw to cut the rest of the pieces. And, like always, I dummy proof every piece with masking tape with my notes. When all the pieces had their correct dimensions, I started to edge bend all the edges that were going to be visible. This was a pretty straightforward process due to the pre glued edge banding, and I used an ordinary iron and a small roller to apply some pressure. When the pieces had cooled and the glue was dry, it was just to remove the axis edge bending with a sharp knife. To make it easy, I used dominoes for joining the pieces, but it could also be done with dowels or maybe even pocket hole screws. For the fixed shelves, I used a piece of scrap as a fence for the machine. This helped me to get good precision of the placement of the morses. And there was a lot of morses to be cut. Then it was time to make tracks for the wire bins. So I set the height of the blade and made a test cut. And since there is a sheet metal lip around, it would make a perfect fit in a small groove with the width of the saw blade. Then it was just to set the fence for the first groove and retract it from the blade. In this way it works like a stop lock for repeated cuts. I made the first grooves on all the pieces and then changed my fence to the new position. To avoid the tear out I used a sacrificial piece on the exit side. Of course some mandatory sanding before applying the finish. After the sanding I vacuumed the surfaces. And then finally Time for the finish. I choose to go with Danish oil for this project and I wiped on a thin coat with a rag. Then some light sanding of all the parts and some more vacuuming before applying the second coat. When the finish was dry, I could start with the holes for the adjustable shelves. And for this, Festool's LR32 system is really great for getting all the holes in an accurate way. Of course it can be made by measuring and manually drill the row of holes carefully, but it takes time and it's hard to get the same accuracy. With this system, it's just to set it up and mark on the rail which positions to be used, and then route away. Last but not least, I made some pocket holes in the base in order to attach it under the bottom shelf. 
I used some scrap pieces as spacers to get an even overhang. And attach with only screws. This will be plenty strong enough for this application. Then it was finally time for assembly. I started with measuring the height for the supports on the wall and then checked for some studs to screw into. Some pre drilling and then attaching the strips to the wall. Place the bottom shelf on the support on the wall, then I could use one of the longer side pieces to mark out on the wall where to place the bracket that would carry the top shelf. Since it was only plasterboard, I had to drill, add anchors, before I could mount the brackets. With the bottom shelf and the brackets in place, all the preparations for the assembly was made. Time for some glue and dominoes, and some tapping. Some more tapping, some more glue, and a little fiddling. When the top shelf was in place, I used brackets to secure the carcass to the wall and also some screws to fasten the bottom shelf. Next up was the brackets for the clothing rail, and I marked the location on some masking tape, which also prevents tear out when drilling the holes. Then it was just to mount the brackets. And for the other side, I had to drill, use anchors, and could then mount the bracket. The rail for the hanger was then just to snap in place. And then repeat for the bottom one. Just testing the functionality, and it was good. Then there was the other side. When both sides were complete, it was time for some shelf pins. And then adding the shelves. The last piece to go in was the thread bins. And then everything was done. So, double rows of clothes rails. Adjustable shelves. And thread bins. Everything times two. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it. And if you did, Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends.